For a content creation system to be effective, I think it needs to have two main components. Number one, it needs to allow for incremental processing. You can't have every time you want to create something be this heavy lift that you have to endure from start to finish. And the second thing is that it has to be as frictionless as possible. You have to smooth out all those rough edges from capturing to storing to processing. You want to spend the least amount of time managing the system and spend most of your time actually creating content within the system. Hello everyone, I'm Jeffrey and today I'm going to walk through version 2.0 of my progressive content creation system that I have in Rome Research. Now, if you are interested and you want to check out my previous video, I'll include a link up above, but I'm going to try and make this video as standalone as possible and just highlight the differences between my first version and this one. So let's take a look at a brief overview of the system, how I capture an idea. So no matter where I am in the Rome graph, I can just tag it as a seed link. And then that way it's going to automatically funnel into my content creation system for later processing. Then that way, whenever I'm ready to look at them in more detail, I can just go to the seedling page that I have favorited on the left hand sidebar. And then I can see them here. And then what I can do is think about what kind of content I want to create with that idea and I can nest those references underneath that particular block. Now, the other thing that I did was in my previous version, I needed to tag everything as an idea to properly work. I've removed the need to do that and I'll show you when I look at my queries on the individual pages. But the other thing that I did to reduce the friction was I set up a text expander so that I don't have to type everything out. So if I wanted to create a video, if I just press VD, then I get everything pre-populated and I just need to put in a placeholder title for the video. Same thing for if it was gonna be a blog post, I just do this here and then I can come up with a, a title. Or perhaps if I'm gonna make it a tweet, I can just create the tweet tag and then do a first draft of what the tweet might be. Then once I'm done with that particular idea, not every idea is gonna have all types of content for it, but the beauty is that I don't have to decide what kind of content I want to create when I capture the idea. So I just have to worry about capturing whatever's in my mind. And then I can wait until later to decide what it is that I actually want to do with it. But once I've figured out what I'm gonna create, I can then mark it as planted and it will be removed from my seedling page. Also, if I have an idea that it struck me at the time, but upon further review, I don't wanna do anything with it, then I can just mark it as hibernate and then that will also get it out of my seedling page because my query is set up to look for anything with the seedling tag, but to not have the hibernate or planted tags included with them. So that's how I get ideas into the system and initially assigned to a different type of content to produce. Now if we look at the updates that I made to version 2.0 versus the first, you can see that I split each type of content into its own page and put it on the shortcuts on the left hand sidebar. I found with them all on a single page, it was pretty long and I had to scroll up and down and it was just cluttered and confusing. This way, I can go into based on the type of content that I wanna work on, what I feel like working on, I can just go to that particular page and pick something out rather than having to scroll up and down the page to see everything in one spot. The other thing that I did was I eliminated the Kanban boards. The reason for that is I didn't have enough content in process to really make it worth the effort of having them there. And the other thing is that if I wanted to edit these tags, you can't edit them if they're a part of the Kanban board with a query underneath. But this way, if I wanted to change this to a draft to editing, I don't actually have to go into the page. I can do it straight from the query here. And all these queries are just set up to look for anything that has the blog tag and the part of the process that it's currently within. So whether it be review, 
editing, draft, and then the idea bank. So this is how I was able to remove needing to tag things with the idea initially, is I just set it up so that it looks for the blog tag, but does not contain any of the other types of states that the content could be in. And I did this for blogs and for videos as well. So a change that I made to processing tweets is that rather than sending it one tweet per day and having to go in every single day and do that, I like to batch them together once per week and then schedule them with the scheduling feature of Twitter. So when I want to process my tweets, I go to my tweet page. I will find the ones that I want to send. I will update, edit them, make sure that they're all good. Once I've scheduled them for a particular day, I will tag them with that that day with the date picker. So perhaps I'm going to tweet this one out on the 21st. And then once I've scheduled it, I will mark it as complete. So it's out of my system. And then when I go to that particular day, I can see in the linked references what tweet I have scheduled to send out that day without ever having to leave my Rome graph. So the other thing that's changed since the first version of this system is that I'm now publishing a blog and a newsletter every single week. If you haven't checked them out, you can go to jeffreyweber.com to sign up or to read the blog post. So I've created templates to make it easier to create each of those different types of content. So for the blog template, I have a checklist at the top for the different actions that I want to remember to do for each post, a place to record potential titles and excerpt for the website, as well as where I can start writing my draft, do my editing. I also included Pomodoro timers so I can take advantage of that productivity tip when I'm doing my writing and editing. And then what I do is once I've done editing, I will copy it to Grammarly. And then send it to my wife uh, through Google Docs to give it a cold eyes review. And then I'll put the link to the Google Docs version right here. And then that way I can have access to everything that I've created for this blog post, all within my Rome graph, easily accessible. So for my newsletter template, one thing that I did to make it easier for myself for capturing the thoughts and ideas that I have during the week that I can then have easy access to when I want to compile it all to send it out is I made the headings here links to attributes that I have added to my daily note template. So if I go to my daily notes, I have this newsletter fodder section. So anything that comes up during the day that fits into one of these categories, I can write a little uh, note to myself about or at the end of the day when I'm doing a reflection, I can start filling in any of these things. Then that way when I want to go ahead and write my newsletter, so if I look at the one I'm currently working on, I can go down to the heading and if I just control shift click, it will open up in my sidebar all the references to that particular item and then I can look through and pull out the ones that I want to include in my newsletter really easily. So if I want to talk about this new book that I'm reading, I can just control drag it over to the enjoying section and then I can change it to text and alias so that now I can freely edit the text here, but I also have a link to where the original note to myself came from. And then similar to the blog post, I have my checklist at the top with things that I need to do I have the final version is a Google Doc that I get my wife to review as a kind of cold eyes before I send it out. And then for YouTube, I didn't really change a whole lot here. I still have my video page with everything and all the different ideas that I have uh, in process, my template, same sort of thing checklist at the top of things I don't want to forget to do, as well as different sections to record ideas as I'm processing the idea through to completion. So a big part of making this video is to showcase the power of iteration. 
In fact, a lot of people complain that I don't like doing the same thing the same way twice because I'm always trying to find a better and easier way to do it. And with this video, I wanna show the decisions, the why behind I made the changes that I did so that you can have a better understanding when you're building your system. Because something that works for me might not work for you. And if you can understand why I made the change or made it a way that it is, it'll just help you when you're trying to create your own system. Oftentimes you'll see other people's big complex workflows and systems for creating content. And you'll get this impression that they kind of just arrived at this instantaneously without seeing all those iterations that got them there. So this kind of peels back the curtain to see all the work and all the changes that have to go into creating something that's going to work for you. Thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully you got something useful out of this video. And if you have any ideas for how I can improve this for version 3.0, I would love to hear about them down in the comments below. And I will see you all next time.